All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Auth Part 1. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to create new users in Rails, and you should be able to explain how hashing works. Um, so this is the first of a three-parter, um, and we're going to uh, build on each lesson. Uh, so by the end of this, you will have built a, an auth workflow a whole bunch of times, and uh, hopefully that'll be pretty ready under your fingers. Uh, it's also one of my favorite uh, series of lessons that we do in the program. So uh, let's, um, let's talk about this first one, creating new users in Rails. So you should know how to do all of, like most of this part already. Uh, you're going to make a user model uh, that you can CRUD, and we're going to make one little tweak to that to be able to work with passwords. So what I want to do is I'm going to demonstrate to you how this works. Then you're going to coach me through it. And then you're going to do it on your own. So to start with, um, just watch. You don't need to follow along with this. So um, let's get a Rails app going. Uh, shout out a noun. What's the uh, what's the app about? Food. Food. Excellent. I call it food court. So Rails new dash dash API. That part's important. Make sure you get the API. We'll call it food court. So first step is going to be to install bcrypt. Uh, when you uh, make a new Rails app with dash dash API, you actually get that almost for free. Um, you still need to um, uncomment it out in your gem file, but not a whole lot to it. All the rest of it's ready to go. Oh, what? Nokogiri is taking a long time to install. What is it? A day that ends in Y? Okay, cool. So I hop into food court. Let's make a server and editor. All right. So um, first thing I'm going to do is hop into the gem file. And if we go down to line 17, it says gem bcrypt. It's all ready to go. All we need to do is uncomment it out. Ta-da. And then bundle install. And with that, step zero is complete. So next thing we need to do is uh, create a route to create a user. Easy enough. If I go over to our router and do resources users. Um, Right now, I only want create. Done. Step one's in the can. Now I need to create a controller to create a user. So I Rails G controller users. Beautiful. So I head over to the users controller. I make a create action. Um, there's going to be user.create. dot 
and uh, it's going to take in a username and it's going to take in a password. Um, we can also put anything else we want on here. Uh, we could make something like display name. Okay, so we make a user and then we send it back. And neat, I think that step is done. So last thing, create a user model with a secure password. This is our new thing. We should know how to do all the stuff I've done already. This next part is the part we got with bcrypt. So I'm going to Rails G model user, singular. And then if I go over to that model, this is the phrase that pays has underscore secure underscore password like that. Uh, that's a macro. It's just like um, add a reader, add a writer, add a accessor, that kind of thing. Um, and this does a lot of our auth magic for us. To go over that migration that it made, I want to keep track of the username. I want to keep track of the display name. And this is also where part of the magic happens. I keep track of a string called password, wait for it, underscore digest. That's going to, so we put it in the controller as password. And because of this has secure password thing, it's going to be in the database as password digest. And then when we read it out of there. Um, we can um, we can convert it back. We can do whatever. So, all right, I make that migration. Then I Rails DB migrate. And that's the thing of beauty. All right, we're done. If I run this, it's on 3000. I pull up Postman. Um, cool, so I'll make a post request to localhost 3000 slash users and I'm going to send over some JSON with username is Kyle and password is Kyle. And uh, display name is Kyle Coberly. All right, and we'll see what happens if I fire it off. Beep. Pew, pew, pew. So what I get back is the user ID database generated, my username, my display name, and this password digest. Very interesting, very interesting. So um, what the password digest is, is an example of a hash. So hash works like this. Let's say um, I have string cat. Now Kyle's shitty hashing algorithm just does like letter number substitution. So that one's three, that one's one, and <laughs> T is the uh, 17th I want to say letter. All right so then what we do is we add uh, all these up. So I go three plus one um, and then plus one plus seven because I want to end up with like a one digit 
hash for this. So that ends up being 4, 5, 12. So we say that, uh, or no, that's right, that's not how that works. We would say this is 21, and then we add those digits together. And so we end up with 3. So the hash for uh, cat is 3. Okay? So the value of this is that um, I can, if you try using Kyle shitty hashing algorithm with cat, you're also going to get three. But I can't get to cat from three. It only goes one direction. That's the magic trick here. So if I had some top secret password, I'm going to make up the uh, numbers for a lot of these. Uh, P is probably like 15, 1, um, 16, 16, 22, uh, 16, uh, 17, 4. So I can add all of those up and keep adding them until I get to one digit. And I have like a reasonably okay guess uh, if the thing that I originally had was password. But if you steal my database and see that I stored a seven in there, you couldn't reverse that to guess that my password was seven. This is the general idea behind hashing algorithms. Cool, and that is everything that we're gonna talk about. So let's uh, expand a little bit. Hit me with some questions off the bat. So it's stored in your database as that, that as the hash. Yes. Okay. So this thing in here, this is the hash of my password that goes in the database. Kyle never made it to the database, so the server was never actually keeping my password. But when I try to log in in step two and give you my password of Kyle, and you hash it, you're going to get the same value. So we can compare those two, and that's how I know that you entered the right password, despite me not knowing what the password is. So is that why whenever you're on a website and you forgot your password, they just kind of issue you a new one? Is yep. because they don't have the means of retrieving it for you? Correct. They, yeah, they didn't keep any record of what your password was. Great observation. What else? What are any popular alternatives to bcrypt or is bcrypt pretty like, industry standard for working on Rails? Uh, bcrypt is probably what you should be using right now. The one uh, that was popular before this was called MD5. Um, and MD5 was um, determined to not be secure enough. These are moving targets because like... Um, Crackers get faster and faster computers, and so they can do more kinds of extrapolations uh, to try to reverse engineer stuff. But also, your computer gets faster and faster also, and so you can more securely hash things uh, without making it take forever. And so it's always a race, uh, but bcrypt is okay right now. What else? Uh, is hashing like the same as encrypting? No. In fact, okay. there's three different things, and we're going to run across at least two of them that sound kind of related but are not the same thing. So we have encoding. Encoding is like Pig Latin. Uh, it's easy to do one way, it's easy to do the other way. Um, or so if I took all the letters and password and just shifted them uh, one to the right, I, you could say that I encoded that password. 
Um, and we're going to be working with a, a technology called JOTS, which is a type of encoding. Easy to do one direction, easy to do the other direction. Uh, one direction, easy to do backwards also. That's one thing. Hashing is uh, relatively easy to do one direction, impossible to do the other direction. Um, it's not like a, a fancy math term or anything. It's like hash browns. So if you're grating potatoes onto a grill and you start mixing them up, like before too long, you can't tell like which part of the hash browns came from which potato anymore. They all get hashed together. So this is what uh, hashing in, in, uh, in uh, cryptography is also. We're mixing everything up so you can't tell what all the, any of the original pieces are. And then the last one is encryption. Encryption is easy to do one direction, very difficult to do the other direction. And um, I don't want to go too deep into this, but it might be of interest to you. That it rely, encryption relies on kind of an interesting property of numbers, which is getting something square is pretty easy. Calculating something square root is much more computationally difficult. So um, that's like kind of the TLDR and how encryption works is that um, we're relying on something being easier one direction than it is the other, uh, one direction than it is the other. So you can decrypt something, but you have to have a special key, it's called a cipher, to do it. Hashing can't be reversed. Encoding is easy as hell to reverse. It's not supposed to keep something a secret. So three related ideas. More questions? Cool. Time for you guys to coach me through how to do all this. So I'm going to back out of this. We'll call it Rails New API, another food court. All right, and I'm going to call on people. Uh, another food court. All right, we're good to go. So, uh, AJ, get us started. How am I going to start this app? Okay, so let me just clarify here. We are, this is a, another copy of the food court. We just started like a brand new API. Brand new API. So give me step one. Oh, okay. So we're gonna have to generate our models, right? Or generate our um, routers and, and all such. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we can do this multiple ways. I think just like you did before, um, definitely want to Let's start with uh, generating the user's model, right? Okay. Which is going to have a um, username and password as okay. attributes. And I guess you said you also had a display name. So let's just stick with that too. Um, so we'll just start with generating the model for right now, but that's good. Rachel, give me another step. Uh, you could un um, uncomment bcrypt to start. Yeah, very nice. And then once I uncomment out bcrypt, what um, what do I need to do to make it ready to go? Uh, then you need to bundle install again. There we go. Okay, very nice. Joe, give me another step. I'm sorry, I wasn't watching the first step. Uh, I saw the second step was uh, getting bcrypt up and running with the bundle install um did you... i've also generated a model okay so we could hop into the controller now okay so what do i need to do to get a controller do a rails j 
generate controller. Okay. For your user. Users, model is singular, controller is plural. Okay, very nice. Uh, let's see, Tyler, give me another step. Oop, got to unmute. Sorry. There we go. Um, you could uh, go into your model. Okay. Um, and we can, uh, well, I guess this is kind of a weird thing to do. We should go back to the controller probably. Okay. Um, and we can make our create action. I like it. Okay. Uh, give me a thing that's going to go in this create action. Um, at users. Users? Oh, we're creating. Sorry. I'm thinking index. Um, yeah, at user um, equals user.create. Okay, very nice. And then what's going to go in here? Um, all of our attributes. Yeah, so give me two of them. So I heard AJ say, like, display name. Uh, so we can do display name. That's fine. And wh where do the where do those come in? Um, params. Params. Very good. And it's going to be yeah colon display name. Okay, uh, Alice. What else am I going to put in here? Um, you can post the password. Yeah. So important thing to remember on this, it's password in the controller, it's password digest in the database. But you don't send password digest over HTTP. You're not creating the user with that. Um, that gets converted. OK, uh, Alice, what else goes in here? Um, you can, do you put a username? Yep. Okay, very nice. And then you will do the render JSON. Do some render JSON. And then you will do a user at user, yep. And then what else, since I'm creating something? Um, the... What is it? Status? Status, good. Uh, if you don't put anything on there, it'll give you a status of 200, which is fine. Mm -hmm. 201 is more specific, so that one's better. Okay. Um, um, can I ask a very like a silly question? Why did you go with display underscore name versus just display name versus like username? I know that they're the, they're the two different words, but I don't know. I just feel like you could combine them as well. I don't know if you had a thought behind that or not. Sure. So. Um, an example of a username might be Kyle Corberly like that. A display name might be Kyle Corberly. Uh, and then I get married and change my name, and now it's Kyle Smith, but my username is the same. <laughs> so sorry. So it's like my wife's behind me. He's like, who'd you marry? <laughs> um, but uh, that, that makes sense. I got you. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Brad, give me another thing to do. So, uh, let's see, we created the controller. Mm -hmm. um, we did the routes. I don't think we did the routes yet. Uh, I don't think we did the routes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what goes here? Um, isn't it, so it's a, it's a git request, or just, we, I guess we can do, uh, oh god, I forgot the rails. Um, uh, isn't it, I have no idea, actually, I forgot what the rails way to do it was. All right, somebody give Brad a hand. I actually have a quick question. Okay. Can you, and, and maybe we'll answer the question also, but can you, can you do resources for yourself here, as opposed to like running the resource command and it creates that for you? Yep. <laughs> You can say that? Okay. Just curious. Made an apartment. 
No, so, Brad, what does resources do? Uh, resources allows you to do like any method um, that comes in. That yes, that's exactly it. So this is going to give me get uh, post put patch delete with the right uh, paths for those all on its own. And then what's the resources I'm creating, Brad? Uh, a user. So you're going to the users model. Good. So I'm doing resources uh, for users, mm -hmm. but I only got one action right now. So what else do I put on here? So only, only, and then square bracket create. Good. Very nice. Yeah. Um, Matt, give me another step. Or not. Christine, give me another step. Uh, create a migration file for the database users table. So I think it got made for me. Oh, OK. Uh, what should I put in here? Uh, so tstring username. Cool. What else? Uh, tstring password digest. And cool. tstring display name. Beautiful. Very nice, very nice. Uh, this migration looks pretty good. What should I do with it? DB migrate. Yeah. All right. Uh, AJ, give me another step. All right, so we have our routes, we have our controller, we have our model built out. Um, we need one more thing. Um, have we migrated yet? We have. You already put the, in the model has secure passwords? There we go, Alice has got it. Has secure password. That's what like turns on bcrypt for the user model. Okay. If I run this server. Okay. And I run this. Kapow! I have created a new user record with a hashed password. It's really all there is to it. Hit me with some more questions. Is pretty much um, everything we set up right now, just for um, get the create a token. Is that correct? correct? Well, not not okay. a token. Tokens we're going to do in the next set uh, or in part okay. two. Uh, all this is doing is creating a user account. So this is how like a user would sign up. Okay. And then can you, can you go over the password digest a little bit more? Absolutely. And just maybe yeah, talk about more. But... Happy to. So let me. Ah, things in the way. There we go. All right, so. HTTP is going to send me username and password. Then that's HTTP. The um, Rails controller is going to take that as username and password. Then it's going to give it to 
the has secure password user model. And basically, whenever uh, a new instance of that model is created, it's looking for the property password. And if it sees it, it hashes the password. It takes the resulting hash and in the database, it ends up being password digest. So in that like create process, it also deletes the password property and we get password digest. It's like it swallowed it up and crapped out the hash. And so that is now the, the password digest, what it, what it pushed out the hash, that is now the password for the user? Or kind of. Is... It is a representation of the password for the user. So everything we've done so far is about creating an account. So I log in, I put my password in as Kyle, I get that hash. In, in part two, when I'm logging in, I'm gonna put Kyle in as my password again. But if I hash the thing that I send over and compare it with the thing in the database, they should be the same. Okay, thanks. Does that mean right now as we create a password and then when we go to put in the uh, JSON web tokens, mm -hmm. that one is going to create the token for us to be able to lock, actually lock in. Exactly. Right? That's, what, uh, that's what happens in, in part two. So part two is that we're going to verify that somebody is who they say they are. We're going to give them a token and then they're going to use that token to um, log in or do things that require being logged in. Exactly, Alice. What else? So the password isn't hashed when it's being sent over HTTP? Correct. Um, so it's there in the request, which is one of the reasons that we want to put it in the body. Because with HTTPS, anybody in between me and that Rails server can't see the, like, the contents of the request. Mm -hmm. All of that is encrypted. But um, everybody can see the URL. They have to. Like mm -hmm. the, my router, the ISP, all these people need to know where to send the request. And so if I did something like users, username is Kyle and password is Kyle. If I put it in the query string like that, yikes, now everybody can see that. But if I put it in the body, it's encrypted. Cool. Now, another problem that happens is there'll be, uh, sometimes servers log all their requests. That like makes sense, right? Well, if you also logged the contents of the request, well, you didn't store a plain text version of the password in your database, but you kept a fucking log of every login attempt with everybody's plain text passwords. So like, you still have to be careful, but yeah. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm starting to see why security is such a big deal because it's just, there's so many different avenues in which you can attack and uh, obtain passwords, whether it be like through oh, yeah. SQL injections and intercepting that, so that's crazy. Um, here's, a, here's another one to wet your whistle. So we can't reverse a hash. Um, if I use Kyle's shitty hashing algorithm and turn cat into three, three could also just be the letter C. It could be the letter A three times. There's lots of other things that would generate that hash. And that's the case with like actual good hashes too. We're just relying on it being so astronomically unlikely that somebody could intentionally cause a hash collision um, that they can't use that to effectively attack your auth system. But, but let's say cat was a super common password. And so uh, we see three as the database uh, in the database for that. 
but Rachel's password is also cat, and AJ's password is also cat, and Joe's password is also cat. And so all of those have threes in the database. Now let's like imagine that it's a more complex hash. And I see something like that password digest identical over and over and over again in the database. And there's probably some other ones that are pretty common in there also. In fact, you might even say that like I get a distribution of those where like password that shows up a bunch of times and um, password with a at symbol for the A that shows up a bunch of times and uh, I don't know all these like common passwords that people use those show up pretty often and then in the long tail of this we end up with like actual secure passwords right so the danger there is if you're using like a really common password and it hashes to the same thing that a bunch of other people's passwords do and I steal your database, I can probably make some guesses. I can at least narrow it down to a couple what those first, uh, what those first few hashes are. And now I know what all those users' passwords are. Yikes. That's called a frequency attack. Um, because the frequency of uh, the reused names gives you a hint as to what they are. Um, anybody know how we get around that? I have a question about that, actually. Yeah. Um, so during one of Jared's lessons, we kind of dived in to um, Password Digest, and we looked at these hashes. Mm -hmm. And... When he was doing his passwords, he would do for a different user, he would uh, have the same password for everyone. Mm -hmm. and he was using the word password. And I noticed that the beginning of the hash was like the same every single time, but the end was different. So I feel like Bcrypt kind of already has something built into it that makes them unique, even though they're the same plain text password. Ooh, there is. It has a name too. It has a cutesy name. Anybody know what it is? It's called a salt. So let's say that for each of these cats, I add just some random characters to the end. I add A7 to that one. I add F, E to this one, and 7, 4 to that one. And then I hash those. And now everybody has different hashes. And then all I need to do is store those along with the hash. So I send over cat as my password. I add the salt to the end of cat, and then I hash all of that and store the resulting thing. What that looks like in here, the first part of this is always the same. This is, um, the first part is the version. We're using version 2A of this hashing algorithm. The second thing is called a cost. That is, um, if you hash something more times, it makes it uh, more secure but uh, it makes it more expensive to calculate. So 12 is a pretty good cost for right now, and it's uh, the default in Rails. When I started in this industry, it was 10. Um, so, all right. And then I, it's not up to the dot. It's, it's like the first eight characters or something like that are the salt for this. So we're going to add that to Kyle and then hash the result, which should equal the rest of it. That's how that works. But yeah, Bcrypt randomly generates those salts for you. That's really interesting. It is really interesting, isn't it? Cool. Ask me more questions. 
this this might be out of the script just for this just for this beginner lesson. Um, uh -huh. But uh, oh shit, I literally just forgot for this. Sorry, my house is crazy. Um, when you um, let me come back to you after I quiet okay. down the house for a second. I'm sorry. That's fine. Other questions. I remember. I remember. Okay. Um, so when you have a, a a password and you're trying to to verify like its length or something like that, mm -hmm. do you want to do a fetch request and let the backend kind of um, come up with like, hey, this password is you, or like for, for some examples, like, hey, this password is used, or hey, this password isn't long enough, or like, hey, this password isn't safe enough, or is that like a feature on the front end? Because some of them I can tell, like, when you submit a password, it takes some time mm -hmm. for it to come back with some feedback, and sometimes it's immediate. Is there like a guideline for that? Sure. So it's something like a length requirement, easy to do client side. And remember, most expensive part of your app is the network request. That's what makes things take a long time. So anytime we can avoid a network request, better off. Um, yeah, if something's long enough, yeah, we can do that client side. If something's complex enough, we can do that client side. Um, we can, um, any of those things we can. What we can't verify client side is uniqueness. So you need to be able to like query the entire database to see if that username's been used anywhere. So the, if you want to do that client side, you would need to maintain a list of every single username on your client. Don't do that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad idea. Cool, what else? Cool, your turn. So I want you to go through these four steps uh, with your own Food Court app and see if you can make it so that when you post to local 3000 users with a uh, username and password, you don't have to do the display name if you don't want to, um, you get back a password digest. If you can do that, you can do this lesson successfully. Um, I'm gonna give you, let's start with six minutes and then let's check in. Go.
Another three minutes. Okay, I'd like you to give me a uh, fist to five on your camera. Fist is what were we supposed to be doing? And five is I got a hash password coming back on Postman. Throw them up in the camera. Good. Good. Nice. Awesome. Hit me with some questions. Uh, those of you who are fours, what do you need to be a five? Uh, I'm just getting a uh, 404 back because it's saying there's no the routing error. Um, okay. But I think I have everything. Like I have my user's um, model with the create. And in my um, my routes, I also have the only create. So should be going through, I think. So the router should look like this. Check the pluralization on this. Resources, users. Uh, and then make sure that you're doing a post request to slash users. Other questions? All right, I'm going to demonstrate this one more time from scratch. So we're going to make Rails new dash dash API, yet another food court. Uh, easiest one to forget on this is the gem file. That's the one that I see the most often. So I'm going to do that first. Go down to 17, turn that on, bundle install, and serve it up. Oops. And then I will 
Rails G controller users. I will Rails G model user. Then I go into the router, resources, users, but only create. And then in the controller, make that create method. Username comes in from params. Password comes in from params. And that's password, not password digest. It gets turned into password digest in the model. So over in the model, has secure password. Then over in the migration, Username, this is password digest. And then I run those migrations. And when I run this, I don't get back anything. Uh, oops, it's because I have to render my response. That'll help. And there is my hashed password. I um I figured out what I was doing wrong at least. Um, nice. I had the has secure password in the controller, not in the user. There you um, go. So that was that was it. Very nice. Other questions that came up. Okay, that is creating new users in Rails. Um, hit me with some questions about hashing. If we're at a party, there's a bunch of lame people and all they want to talk about is cryptography. Uh, they ask you to, oh, you're learning about hashing. Think about what you would say to them. And where do you start getting tripped up? So if you'd like to write up your explanation of how uh, hashing works and DM it to me, I will tell you how accurate your explanation is. If you'd like to read more about hashing, over in my knowledge wiki, over in security, I have lots of stuff uh, about hashing and other encryption things that you can peruse at your leisure. Cool. Anything else we need to talk about? Awesome. We'll pick up part two tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.